So Arctic has been pretty quiet so far this year with new product launches. The company recently released some new CPU coolers for the server market, but there hasn't been much for the desktop enthusiast to get excited about from Arctic, which is one of the reasons why we've not featured Arctic much on the channel recently. However, we hear a lot of comments about how good the Arctic P12 fans are, so we thought this would be the perfect opportunity to take a look at the new P12 Max and see what, if any, performance benefits they can give us on the Liquid Freezer 2360 and a powerful CPU like the Intel Core i9-13900K. Arctic P12 Max fans are available to purchase now. In the US, you can pick these up for around about $10 each. In the UK, at OC UK, they are currently available for £7.99 each. Alternatively, if you want more than one fan, you can pick up a five pack from Arctic directly for around 35 euros, which sounds extremely cheap, especially when you consider the price of some alternatives. As well as the higher RPM that comes with the P12 Max, there has been some other improvements and design changes compared with the original P12s that were found pre-installed to the Liquid Freezer 2. Those design changes include a 200 to 3300 RPM PWM speed range with a zero decibel mode. Standard P12 is up to 1800 RPM. Improved blade pitch design compared with the standard P12. A closed fan blade for improved stability at high RPM. A larger hub fitted with a improved motor that creates around 5% less vibration compared with the standard DC motors. And anti-vibration pads are now fitted to the P12 Max on the four mount points. In terms of specifications, so they are a standard 120 by 120 by 25 millimeter thick fan. They have a maximum airflow of 81.04 cubic feet per minute, maximum static pressure of 4.35 millimeter H2O, and a mean time to failure of 500,000 hours. They're equipped with a standard four pin PWM connection and come with a six year warranty. So the plan in this video is to try and determine what, if any, performance benefits we can get from fitting these P12 Max fans onto the Liquid Freezer 2 360. The idea is, first we'll give you a quick guide on how to swap the fans over, should be pretty simple, and then I'm going to run a series of tests to see what, if any, performance benefits we get from adding these P12 Max fans to the Liquid Freezer 2 360. I guess this should come in useful for somebody that maybe already owns the Liquid Freezer 2 and perhaps has upgraded their system and has more powerful CPU now and needs a bit more cooling performance. So the idea is to measure the P12 Max and the original P12s at fixed RPM levels and also take a look at the difference in noise levels at certain RPMs and see what performance benefits we can get from adding these P12 Max fans to the Liquid Freezer 2. So first a quick demonstration on how to swap the fans over. I know for most of you that are experienced enthusiasts this might seem like me teaching you how to suck eggs, but for more novice users that are not really used to fiddling about with parts and swapping things over, it might come in useful. I'm guessing all you will need is just a standard Phillips screwdriver. So I think first thing we need to do is remove all the screws. The original P12s that come on the Liquid Freezer 2, they all have really short cables and they're daisy chained to each other. So we might have to do a bit of cable management with the P12 Max, because you can see they come with a much longer cable. These are daisy chained to each other. So you've got these really short four pin cables on the fans. So we need to disconnect all these first. So once you've got all the fans removed, all you really need to do now is install the new P12 Max fans to the radiator basically the same way that we just remove them. So if we just pop all three fans in position first and see about the cable management afterwards. Be careful not to trap the daisy chain wire at the end here. Depending on where you install the radiator in your case, depending which way around it's going to be facing the cabling 
or the original positioning of the cabling may have been like facing towards the outside of the case you might want to swap the fans round so the cables come from the opposite side and then hopefully move that daisy chain or there's enough length on that daisy chain it looks like there is to put it to the other side if necessary because i'm testing this on an open test bench it's not that important for me to swap the arrangement or the position of the fans because you'll see the cables anyway and it's not really that important but i will give you a quick idea of how to manage the cables maybe just tidy them up along the back edge with some zip ties once they're all daisy chained to each other so i just screw all the fans down into position And then we need to sort out the cable. So I'm just gonna switch it around so you can see a bit better what I'm doing. What I might do actually is try and feed some of the cables behind these screws because there is a bit of a gap between the shank of the screw and the actual shroud of the fan. So I think that's what I might try and do to tidy these cables up. Even though the cables are a fair bit longer, you can do a pretty good job of managing them or neatening them up just by using the screws and tucking them underneath like the shanks of the screws. And uh, you can actually tuck them down a little bit in between the two fans as well. You might find that adding one or two zip ties can make it look a bit neater, but without the need of any zip ties, you can do a pretty good job of tidying the cables up, even though they are quite a bit longer than the original P12 cables. So we'll get this installed to the test bench. I've already run some tests with Liquid Freezer 2 using the standard P12 fans. Let's get this installed to the test bench and uh, see how it compares in terms of performance with the P12 Max fans fitted. So the test system specification for this is an Intel Core i9-13900K clocked at 5.5 GHz on P cores, 4.3 GHz E cores. V core voltage is 1.3 with load line calibration at level 6. iGPU has been disabled. The graphics card is a Gigabyte RX 7900 XT gaming OC. Motherboard is a Z790 Aorus Master. There's 32 GB of HyperX DDR5 6000 mega transfers per second and the power supply is the Seasonic Prime TX1000. Let's start by looking at the noise levels as this will give us a good indication of thermal performance relative to the noise output. Between 1200 to 1800 RPM the P12 Max fans are quieter across the entire speed range. As the fan speed increases the difference in noise output between the two widens which is very impressive from the P12 Max as the P12 was already a very quiet fan. Even at the higher RPM range that the P12 can't reach the P12 Max is still relatively 
relatively quiet. At 3000 RPM, the P12 Max only outputs 53 decibels, which is quieter than some coolers that we have previously tested, which run much lower maximum fan RPM. Testing the fans at various RPM intervals provides some interesting results. At the lower RPM range, when the P12 is outputting more noise, it has a small advantage over the P12 Max in terms of thermal performance. However, as fan speed increases, the P12 Max claws back the thermal performance and starts to overtake the P12 fans as they hit 1600 RPM. As the P12 Max fan speed increases, the CPU temperature continues to drop, so the extra RPM is useful here, but obviously at the cost of more noise. At 100% duty cycle, the P12 fans reach 1850 RPM, while the P12 Max can push all the way up to 3200 RPM. Unsurprisingly, the much higher RPM from the P12 Max provides a significant benefit in thermals, so for users who are fine with the brute force approach to cooling without being concerned about noise, the P12 Max offers a huge advantage here. But with the fans limited to 40 decibels noise output, the P12 Max again offers an advantage in thermal performance over the P12, as the P12 Max fans are able to run at a higher RPM. The difference in delta between the two at 40 decibels may only be small, but any decrease in CPU temperature is taken as a positive. To give you a better understanding of those differences in noise output, here's the P12 at 1200 RPM. The P12 Max at 1200 RPM. P12 at 1400 RPM. P12 Max at 1400 RPM. P12 at 1600 RPM. P12 Max at 1600 RPM. P12 at 100% duty cycle. And the P12 Max at 100% duty cycle. It's also worth mentioning that because of the higher fan speed from the P12 Max, we were able to push a little extra clock speed through the 3900K and still have stability, which wasn't possible with the stock P12 fans. Overall, these P12 Max fans look like they could be a good upgrade for anyone, like I said at the beginning of the video, maybe has the Freezer 2 360 and wants a little bit more performance out of it. Maybe even wants to run it at lower noise levels. We saw in the testing that across the entire RPM range, the P12 Max are quieter than the stock P12 fans. The P12 might have a slight edge in thermal performance at those lower RPMs, but as a whole, the P12 Max seemed like a better fan. It would be great actually if Arctic launched a new version of the Liquid Freezer 2, maybe the Liquid Freezer 2 Max with the P12 Max fans. So if you are thinking of upgrading to the P12 Max fans for the Liquid Freezer 2, it's definitely looks like a worthwhile investment, especially considering how cheap these P12 Max fans are at around $7.99 each or $10 in the US. Or you could even pick up a five pack, which is one of these for around 35 euros use three fans on the cooler maybe use the extra two fans as a couple of case fans so they seem like great value for money and they offer a benefit in terms of thermals at higher rpm and lower noise at lower rpm so i hope you enjoyed watching this comparison video between the arctic p12 and p12 max fans let us know what you think of the fans in the comment section if you have enjoyed watching this video don't forget to give us a thumbs up Hit the subscribe button if you've not already done so. If you enjoy what we do here at KitGuru and you want to help support us, you can always head over to the store, pick up some merch, or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to the website.